Hey guys, welcome to this tutorial on electrical distributors, cables and conductors parameters. Now we have a load taking 200 amps and is supplied by uh, a copper cable and an aluminum cable, both connected in parallel. Now each cable is 200 meter in length and they both have the same cross-sectional area, the core of 40 millimeter square. Now they want us to find the voltage drop in the combined cable. Before you do anything, try to draw the circuit according to the problem statement. So by drawing the circuit, things get clear. So we have two cables combined, collected in parallel. So we have aluminum, copper, and they join here to supply this load that is taking 200 amps. So we know there is 200 amps of current flowing here, but we don't know the current that's flowing here, and the current that's flowing here, and the current that's flowing there. Now, we have to get the resistance of each individual cable in order to calculate the current for each part of the circuit. Now, we have to use now the formula for the RTC. That is the formula used to calculate the resistance depending on the parameters, cross-sectional areas, and the resistivity of the material that's given. The formula is RDC is equal to rho times the length L, which is the distance of the conductor, over A, the area. The area is in meter squared. L the distance in meter and rho is the resistivity of the material that is in micro ohm meter. Now you have this formula, you got everything so there is no headache, you just plot to calculate both resistance. So when we plot our values, we have the resistivity for the aluminum cable which is given here and we have the length that's 200 meter for each cable and the resistivity of the copper which is 0 0.018 times the power minus 6 times the length and so forth now the critical thing to to note here is the area in the formula the area is used in meter square but it's given in millimeter square so you have to know how to do the conversion so basically all that you do is you just take the milli you square it so it's now become 10 to the power minus 6 instead of 10 to the power minus 3 so 40 times 10 to the power minus 6 give you 4 times 10 to the power minus 5 meter square then you compute the value so we got the r for the aluminum is for 0.14 ohm and for the copper is 0 0.09 ohm now we got the resistance what's next now the next thing to do here is to find the total resistance because they say the voltage drop of the combined cable so you can do the current divider rule since you already have resistance for each cable you can easily do the current divider rule to find them and then probably you still have to get the total resistance in order to get the combined voltage drop otherwise you won't get it so the next thing to do is now to get the parallel resistance of the aluminum and the copper. So R total is now equal to 0 0.0547. So we combine both in parallel according to the formula. Now we got a total resistance. We can now redraw this circuit to include this resistance in series now with the, since these things have been collapsed now to a single resistance. So we can quickly draw the circuit resistor and this one still become our load. This is still our load. So we can, that's the ground. So this one is 200 amps. And this is now our R total, which is equal to 0 0.054. Seven. So now we got our total, which is equal to 0 0.0547 ohm. That is now in series with us. Now that will mean 
the current that is flowing here is exactly the same current since the circuit is now in series. Now, easily now you can calculate the voltage drop across this resistance by using the current times the resistance to get the voltage drop. Let's do it. So now having plotted the values, we have the voltage drop, which is our total times the total current that's flowing in a series circuit. So that is equal to 0 0.0547 times 200. And that's give us 10.94 volt. That's a voltage drop across this resistance. So that is this question have been solved. So the next question is then to calculate the current carried by each cable and the power wasted in each cable. Okay, so we already have the resistance calculated for each individual cable. Easily we can use the current divider rule as we said earlier to find the to find the, 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 the current in each cable. Now to solve this one, it will be easier to redraw the circuit and revert back to the original circuit. Now this resistance is known and this resistance is also known. Let's just plot the values. So the R copper is 0 0.09 ohm and R aluminum is 14 ohm as we've calculated. There is still the same current that's flowing in here. A current of 200 milli, no, 200 amps. And that current is the total current for the circuit. So there is current flowing in this direction and also in this direction and converging here, but it's split. So we don't know how much current is flowing in each branch. They will be different because the resistance are also different. Now to find that current, we do the current divided rule so the current divider rule says that the current flowing in each branch in the individual branch that you want to calculate will be equal to the resistance of the other branch divided by the resistance of that branch plus the resistance of the other branch times the total current now in this case for the current flowing in this aluminum copper cable is going now to be the R copper divided by the R aluminum plus the R copper times the total resist the total current which is this 200 amps and the same uh, process the same rule will apply when we do the current for this branch so this is how you get the formula now once you have the formula you can just and then go ahead plot the values so straightforward Plotting the values, you get the current in the aluminum cable equal to 78.26 amp and the current in the copper cable equal to 121.74 amps. You can see that the current in the copper cable is bigger because the resistance here is also smaller. And this one is less because the resistance is slightly bigger because the, the bigger the resistance, the less the current has, and that flows into the circuit. If you combine these two, you should get the 200 amps of the total current. So this is how you calculate the current for each cable. Now we may move on to the next question. So now that we have calculated the current, we can move into the next question, which is to find the power that is wasted in these two resistors. Now the power we know, the, there are two formulas. The power can be calculated with V times I, that is without losses. If you include a, a heating element like a resistance, it can be calculated with the I squared times the resistance or V square divided by the resistance. Now, we can use any of the two formulas. We're still going to find the value. Now let's plot the formulas. So when we plot the values, we get P is equal to I square R. Now, 
the current for each branch that we calculated and the resistance for each cable. We plot the value so we get the power dissipated in the, co the aluminum cable is 857.4 watt, which is about 0 0.86 kilowatt. And on the copper, dissipated in the copper cable, equally so, we use the same formula and we find 1,333.856 watt, which is about 1.33 kilowatt. As we can see here that the power dissipated in the copper cable is more. That goes with the current. So the higher the current being dissipated, the more power also is going to dissipate. So if there's more current passing into the wire, the wire is going to be hotter than if there's less current passing through the wire. So this is how you solve these type of questions. So thank you guys again for following up. If you are preparing for an exam, you have to practice this thing times and times again so that it's going to stick. That's how you learn. Learning by doing, practicing. Okay, see you guys for the next tutorial. Cheers.